This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create this vector sphere graphic with the core inside of it. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set the view to custom and then we'll zoom in at 100%. We'll open our line of distribute menu with this button up top. Uh, make sure you have last selected chosen from this drop down and then we'll go to the edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu so the first thing we're going to do is create a, a circle so let's come over to the circles and ellipses tool and hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle and we'll go back to our select tool I'm gonna make this uh, a, a shade of light gray maybe 10% and I'm going to give this a radial gradient in the fill tab click on radial gradient and press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and I'm gonna double click this line right here to create a new stop and then I'll click on that stop and I'll take under the HSL tab I'll take the L column and slide this over to the left and then I'll double click right here to create another stop and then I'll click on this stop here in the middle make that all the way white and then I'll click on this stop right here and I'll make this a little lighter and I'll go back to this stop uh, I'll make that a little just a little darker just so we can see the edges of the circle and I'll click on this stop and make that a little darker do the same thing right here with that stop make that a little darker and that looks pretty good so once we once we've done that I'll take this center node right here and put this up at the top you know what? We won't do that just yet. Let me undo that. What I'm going to do now is let's go back to the uh, select tool and let's right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm going to take this arrow right here and slide this one in to the, to the left and I'll take this arrow and slide this one over to the right. And I'll hold shift and click on the uh, circle beneath it and I'll center that on the vertical axis and then click off of the graph to deselect everything. And I'll click on just this, uh, this ellipse right here. And I'll press G on the keyboard to get to the gradient tool. And I'm going to change the color of each of these stops. So I'm going to click on this first stop up here. And I'm going to give this um, a shade of blue. Actually, no, a shade of green. Give that a shade of green. I'm going to make this pretty dark. Then I'll click on this next one. And I'll also make that a shade of green, but a little lighter. And this one, click on that stop, give that a shade of green as well. Slide that over to the right, and make this one even lighter. And this center one right here, this can stay white. So let me pull this stop down a little bit, and then I'll pull this one down a little bit. And click on this first one. I just want to make sure there's some contrast between these shades. So I'm going to take this first one and make this one a little darker. I'll click that one, maybe make that a little darker. And that's pretty good, I'll leave that like that. And then we'll go back to the Select tool. And then I'll click on this circle in the background here. Right click that and go to Duplicate. And I'll take this top arrow and drag that down to here. Take this bottom arrow, drag that up to there. Hold Shift and click on the, uh, the circle in the background. Oops, I click the wrong thing, hold shift, click on the circle in the background and center that on the horizontal axis and click off of it to deselect everything. And then we'll click on this oval. We'll go to our gradient drop down and we'll choose the green shade that we used before that we just created. Press G on the keyboard to get that gradient tool and I'm just going to hold control and shift and scale this in a little bit. Maybe about that much. And that's pretty good. And we go back to the select tool, hold shift, click on this other green oval so we have them both selected. And we'll right click them and go to duplicate. And then path, uh, intersection. And I'm going to turn that black, that intersection part, I'm going to turn that black and bring the opacity down a little bit. And then I'm going to click on this green oval, hold shift, click on the other green oval, uh, right click it, go to duplicate, and then path. Union and then hold shift and click on our gray circle in the background and go to path Difference and then path Break apart 
And once you do that, you can click off of the graphic and you'll see we've broken it up into these four little pieces. And the reason we did that is so that we could take this top piece up here and click and drag that out and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And what I'll do next is I'm going to click on this black intersection piece in the middle here and I'll right click that, go to duplicate, hold shift, click on this uh, horizontal oval right there and go to path difference and then path break apart. And what we could do is hold shift and click on this big piece to the right to deselect it and then hold shift and click on this big piece to the left to deselect it. And you'll see what's what's the only thing left selected are these tiny little fragment pieces that are um we don't really want there because we really, we don't really want them there because they uh, cause glitches and and computer slowdown. So we can just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And that's going to also break this up into two different pieces. That's the main reason we did that. And we're going to do the same thing with this one up here. So let's take this intersection piece, right click it, duplicate, hold shift, click on this oval, and go to path difference, and then path break apart. We could hold shift and click on the large green piece up top to deselect it, and then hold shift again and click on this large green piece below it to deselect that. And again, all we have left selected are these tiny little fragment pieces that you can't really see, but they're there. You just press delete on the keyboard and get rid of them. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is <clears throat> I'm going to click on this piece down here, that gray piece, and hold shift, click on this green piece right there and hold shift and click on this gray piece and we're going to hold shift the whole time we do this so just go ahead and click on that piece and then that piece so that we have all of these pieces right here selected and I'm going to unify them together by going to path union and then I'll take this um, black object in the center here and I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate <clears throat> and then I'm going to go to the bezier pen for over here in the toolbar or you can just press B on the keyboard and I'm going to turn on the snap to cusp nodes up here. Turn on uh, the button that says snap to cusp nodes. And that's going to make it so that you can take the cursor and snap it onto corners of objects. And I'm going to snap it onto this corner right here and click. And then snap that and then bring the line across and snap the line onto this corner and click. And just click around the rest of the graphic and connect it back to the starting point. We'll go back to the select tool. Uh, we could turn off our snap to cusp nodes now. And with that shape that we just drew, I'm going to right click it and go to duplicate. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on the black object there in the middle and go to path intersection. And then I'll click on this object, hold shift, click on this black piece right here and go to path difference. And now we could hold shift with this one selected right here, we could hold shift and click on this green object to the right and go to path union. And we can click on this object, hold shift and click on the green object uh, above it and go to path union. So there we have our two little different segments right there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is let's press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and click in on our gray circle right there, our little sphere. I'm just going to take this stop and put this over here. I'm going to hold control and shift and click and drag this out to make this a little bigger. And I'll put this out a little more. I want the white part, the very white part coming along the bottom left edge right there. Like that. Maybe like that. I'll bring this up. Oops. I'll bring this up a little bit. Maybe make that one a little lighter. So it ends up looking somewhat like that. That's pretty good right there. Then we go back to the select tool <clears throat> and let's click on that green shape and then hold shift and click on the green shape beneath it. And we'll right click that and go to duplicate and we'll unify them together by going to path union. And we're going to turn this a light shade of gray, maybe 10%. Um, if you hover your cursor over the shade, it'll tell you 10%. And I'm going to give that a stroke of the same color. So we're going to hold shift and press the 10% again. And it's going to create a little outline going around it. And I'm going to go up, come up here to lower selection one step. I'm going to click that once and then a second time to put that beneath the green objects. And the stroke style, the size should be 15. 15 works pretty good there. And once you've done that, we can go to path, stroke to path, and path, break apart. 
and then path union and then we can click on our uh, our sphere right here right click that and go to duplicate and then hold shift and click on that object that we just created right there if you need to zoom in you can just press plus and minus on the keyboard to zoom in and with them both selected we'll go to path intersection let me press one and zoom back out to show you what we have now so that's how that looks so far the next step is to um, let's click on this green object right here and we'll right click that and go to duplicate and we're gonna turn this red just for now we're gonna bring the opacity down about in half and I'm gonna click this a second time to get the rotation handles and I'm gonna turn on the snap to pads up here and I'm gonna take this crosshair right here and I'm just gonna snap this to the edge right about here you want it you want it right about there that's going to be the center point of that graphic so when I rotate it now it now rotates around that center point so that's where I have that there uh, let me turn off the snap to pads and I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag this down about that much put that right up there let me turn the snap to pads back on see if I could snap that to the edge you know what let's put this off to the side and click on the green graphic and I'll click this a second time to get the rotation handles make sure you have the snap to pads on and I'm gonna take this crosshair and snap that to the edge down there as well and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to where it says snap to pads and turn that off and then I'm gonna come over to where it says snap from into an items rotation center and turn that on and then we could take that red graphic and we could snap the two center points together like that and I'm gonna do the same thing <clears throat> with this uh, with this side down here we'll click on that green one right click that go to duplicate we'll turn that red bring the opacity down about in half click it a second time to get the rotation handles and uh, I'm gonna turn off the snap to center points from now and I'll turn on the snap to pads turn that back on and then we'll take this um, this crosshair and snap it to the edge right there and then we could turn the snap to pads off and turn the snap to uh, items rotation center back on and I'll click on this again to get back to our scaling handles and I'm gonna hold control and shift and click and drag to scale this down until it's about the size of the object beneath it um, above it right here let me zoom in to show you you can just press one on the keyboard to zoom in let me turn off the um, the snap to center point and turn on snap to cusp nodes and we could take this corner and snap it right there and you can see with this corner right here it's still a little too big so I'm gonna hold control and scale this down a little bit and then snap it back over there and see how that looks alright that's pretty good that's close enough so I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to zoom back out we could turn off the snap to cusp nodes and we could hold shift and click on this um, other object we want those both of those red objects selected and then we can go to uh, go to path union and then we're gonna create a circle so let's come over to the circles and ellipses tool hold control and shift and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle and I'm gonna turn this one blue and I'm gonna get rid of that stroke or that outline by holding shift and clicking on the X and then I'll go back to the select tool and I'll hold shift and click on this object right here and center it on the vertical axis and then align the top edges and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on this blue circle and I'm gonna hold control and scale this up a little bit scale it down actually and let me zoom in and I want to make sure that the top of this blue circle matches up with the top of that red oval right there so I'm just gonna hold control and click and drag this over to the right because I know it's already aligned I just need it put on top of it like that and then we want to make sure that the right edge of this blue circle is coming out to the right edge of that red shape right there so to do that I'm gonna hold control and grab this bottom arrow and just scale this up until it gets to about that edge like that and then I'm gonna hold alt and click on the blue graphic right where the red shape is to select the um, the red shape beneath it and go to edit duplicate and then I'll hold shift on the keyboard and click on the blue circle 
and go to path difference and then path break apart and then I'll hold shift and click on this blue this blue part right up here in the top right corner to deselect that and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it so we're just left with this these two objects right here and then we, once we have that we can click on this hold shift click on the red one so we have both of them selected and go to path union and then we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out uh, what I'll do now is I'll take the opacity of that and bring that up all the way and we'll give this a radial gradient let's come over to the fill tab we'll give that a radial gradient actually first before we do that I'm gonna make that um, what color did I use in the thumbnail blue so I'm gonna use a shade of blue um, <clears throat> Uh, come down here I'll pick maybe this shade over here and then I'll give that a radial gradient I'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and I'm gonna click on the stop out here bring the opacity all the way up and let me zoom in on this so I can see what I'm doing now what I want to do now is I want to double click on this line right here to put a new stop there and I'm gonna click on this one and I'm going to make the L column over to the right, make that lighter. And then I'll click on this middle, the center one here, make that slightly lighter. And maybe you over uh, with like a different shade of blue. Maybe like that. And I'll take this part and put it over here. And I'll hold Control and Shift and scale this out about that much. Maybe I'll put that out there a little more. That's pretty good. We go back to the Select tool. Press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. And one last final step, I should put a little bit of um, a shine on this sphere right here. To do that, <clears throat> I'll just create a circle. Just hold Control and Shift. Click and drag to create an ellipse. Go back to the Select tool. Uh, let's, turn this, let's turn this red and bring the opacity down in half so it contrasts with the rest of the graphic. Hold Shift and click on our gray sphere and we'll center that on the vertical and horizontal axis click off of the graphic deselect everything and I'm going to take this circle and put it down here in the bottom left corner right about there maybe I'll even hold control and scale this up a little bit and I'm going to turn this white and give that a linear gradient and press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and I'll put the uh, white side of the gradient down here and I'll put the transparent side up up to about right there. We'll go back to the select tool, bring the opacity up. Um, yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to lower this beneath all of this green, all this green and blue shapes right here. So I'm going to come over to the lower selection one step. Click on that a few times until it goes beneath everything. Oops, too far. There we go. And then we can press one on the keyboard. Actually, we are we, we already are zoomed out. We can click and drag over the whole thing, group it together, and resize it and edit it however you see fit. And that's how you can create that using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.